you raised Blaney totally hard. I get it. You're racing for the win. Like, what's your mindset there? It, it, and and does any of it play into be, beyond? I want to win this race. I'm a Chevy guy. He's a Ford racing Chevys. Absolutely. Yeah, it was in every thought, every corner, every throttle application, every brake input, every downshift, upshift, all parts of the lap. I was not going to crash him. I was not going to use my front bumper, side fenders, anything. Dirty air, different story. Yeah, I'm going to, and I'm going to keep the lead because that's everything. So um, before the second to last run, I thought we had him covered. And then, um, you know, coming to the end of stage two, the 17 drove by me. I couldn't hold him off. Made some adjustments. Got too loose. We were too tight. Then we were too loose. Then we were too tight again when Blaney and the 19 were right there. And that last caution came out. And I just asked Phil and, and our group to please let me turn better, make the car turn better without giving up any rear grip. And then we were able to drive away. So um, I just knew that if I could hold him off, you know, and he got by me one time, I was able to get back by him. Was not going to run him up. Was not going to pinch him up. Um... Yeah, I know he's mad, and I don't care. I do not care. I did not care then. I do not care now. I'm here to race him. I'm not going to wreck him. And um, I gave him the bottom most times. One time I was inside of him was that after he got by me. I crossed back over into three, and I made sure to wrap the bottom. Like, I'm not going to slide up and pinch him at all. Um, it's in my mind the entire time, for sure. Anger. He gets angry. It's okay. I've known him for a decade. And I could see him moving around in the car, and the car's going straight, and I could see his colorful suit and gloves. Um, I didn't see, apparently, there was, um, I was number one, I don't know. But um, I did see, I could see, like, movement when I checked the camera, and I was like, oh, he is, he is angry. And then, uh, yeah, the caution came out, and we made the right adjustment, and we were able to drive away. So, um yeah, it's nothing other than wanting to win and wanting to hold track position. And he could run second and win the championship. He did it last year. He could do it again. And um, he ultimately did it. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Following up on a lot of that, Ross, were you surprised, given everything that was at stake for him, that he's running in the back of you and really forcing the issue? Or I mean, you, you said you've raced him so long. Is he, just, is he always that aggressive? Were you expecting that? or? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't expect him to throttle up down in one and two and, and drive square into me. But these cars allow that. They, they do. And the 19... He didn't care about the 19. He probably just assumed the 19 win over me. I don't know. But, um, yes, uh, unexpected. And that last caution couldn't have came out like at a better time. I was so thankful. Um, but didn't account for guys on two tires. Didn't expect to be second row. Thought I'd be front row again, um, kind of no matter what. So, um, yeah, didn't not surprised by it. But uh, because it's him and he does that, um, and these cars allow that. They allow, like, just – I don't know, inconsequential hits, um, but they also don't affect the front car as much either. Like, it, I slid, but I was able to hold the lead. And, then, and your answer to Jenna, um, I was struck by the fact that, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here to race. I'm, gonna give, I'm not going to give an inch. Like, that's how you always race. But the ethos of this race for the non-championship four guys has been, as Steve Wittart would say, racing with mittens. That, like, it almost seems like that's why we've had nine consecutive winners who were champions until you, you told Dave Burns out there that like you were pr proud of winning this race because you've done something that's never been done before. Do you feel like you also kind of set a new standard for maybe how to race the championship four guys there? Are you proud of that as well? Well, I'm proud that we won. And I watched practice back yesterday morning, Saturday morning, and I heard Dale and her junior say like, Ross will be one, they'll get up and race these guys. And I, I paused it and I was sitting there and I'm like, would I do that? I don't know. That seems kind of aggressive. And then I clicked in, and I just like, I didn't really have an answer for myself. Like I asked myself, would I race them? And I was like, well, I'll race them, but would I like? He was like, he's gonna race them aggressive. He'd be one that'll do it. If there's anybody that'll do it, he will. Or however he said it. And I was like, I don't know. Kind of undetermined. And then I got out there, and I was like, I'm doing it. <laughs> I am racing them. But but the difference was is I'm not gonna use my front. Or front front bumper, front fenders, like side. I'm not gonna pinch them up into the wall. I'm not gonna fence like I didn't mean to fence Larson at Darlington, but I did it. Like I was not going to do that. I was not going to drive into the corner and like when he cleared me down into one, like I was like, I'm not gonna try to like make it anything other than cross him over and do it clean and then have leverage into three and wrap the bottom and 
and it ha- it worked, and I was like, holy cow. Like, he passed me. He's faster, but I got right back by him. He did not, I don't think, led the, I don't even think he led the lap. So, um, yeah, in my mind the whole time, and i um, proud of the precision driving we all did. You know, the only contact was him just in a moment of anger, just throttling up in one and two to drive square into my back bumper. Um, other than that, no contact, and, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm here to do. Come up here to Lee. Ross, I'm just kind of curious, ending this year on a high note, I mean, you do you kind of think of what could have been if the years were reversed, and you were in the championship for last year, I mean, does it does it make that any easier coming out of here with a win, knowing that it's possible, that it's capable, that you can do that if you get to the championship four again? For me, it's an evolution of, of track house um, and GM with this car, right? It's, it's year two. We finished up year two with this car. We came out so fast last year. We found it in the, the last Charlotte Oval test, and then we came out to road courses everywhere, and we won on road courses, super speedways. We didn't win on the oval last year. We won there this year. We sustained that level of competition. Look, we've had our fair share of eighth place days and 18th place days, and sometimes 22nd place days, like straight up. So, um, yeah, I, um, it it's just a continuation in a in a. We're staying here. We're not going away. Like we're disruptive on track, usually by my driving. But it goes with the, the disruptiveness of Justin and Pitbull and the, our leadership team doing things different and, and having a, a real presence in Nashville and us keep like holding events there and keeping a presence there on Broadway um, for something outside of Charlotte and Concord and the Lake Norman area. Our shops in Concord, all of our employees are there except for Justin and the brain trust of the marketing side. So, um yeah, I uh, I just love that it's uh, we're staying here and we're continuing to be fast. Um, our processes are working and we trust them and we continue to see it through. Go ahead, Wolfgang. Uh, Wolfgang Monzer from Germany Rennsport Press Agency. First of all, congratulations. I hope my question is not too personal for you. I was confused at the podium ceremony after your race when you're winning. You smashed the watermelon. Can you explain why? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Wolfgang. Good to see you. I think the last time we talked, it might have been at this podium in 2019. I was also very excited about the future, and then obviously it didn't come to fruition. But I'm having, I don't, I guess I was up here last year for championship stuff, and I'm having flashbacks to that day, and it's good to have you back. Um, Yeah, I'm an eighth generation watermelon farmer, and anytime I can put agriculture on a bright, light stage like this with these incredibly bright lights as you guys go in and out of focus for me um it is it's what i want to do there we're a small part of the one percent that's in charge of feeding the other 99 percent of us that rely on farmers to to eat every day and you know if it's smashing a watermelon on the front stretch and then in victory lane um it's just to shine a bright light and and promote agriculture and hopefully win on Sunday, sell on Monday, we sell some watermelons tomorrow. Um, And then my platform is incredible. So I get to kind of, obviously we have our corporate partners at Trackhouse is able to, you know, put on my car. And then I also get to do what I want. It's my life. It's my career. It's my platform. And so, you know, something like bringing farmers to the racetrack next year, starting at the Daytona 500 with our Agda Asphalt program, is just a simple way for me that I can just tell farmers thank you, let them enter on agdasphalt.com, and they can come enjoy the races. Uh, we had some, we had a, a Bear Seminus, now at Seedway guy with his kid this weekend. Kid had never been to a race. That kid is hooked, and that's the same way with other farmers that will be here um, next year. So, um, yeah, I just want to promote what my family has done for a really long time. Most of our, most of the families in the room, if you go back far enough. All of y'all, your family's farmed at some point. They were smart enough to get out of it, okay? There was some not-so-good days, and my granddad remembers them, but for my dad's generation and my generation, it's been better days, and these, I believe, are the good old days. So promoting agriculture is top of mind for me. So, um, yeah, smashing it is just what I do, and I'm going to keep doing it hopefully for a really long time. 
That's right. That's right. The the crowd, I was a little worried that they might be focused on Blaney. I went down to three and four where NASCAR wanted me to go and uh, did a burnout by them. Me and Blaney did burnouts by each other. That was pretty cool. I was worried we were going to run into each other. And then, um, yeah, the reaction was just as strong as the other wins. And and um, I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud that people people see that how much I, I care whenever we win. Every race, there's one right inside the hauler. Look, yeah, we've had a bit of a rough patch, so it's been in there a little bit, but it watermelon has never tasted as sweet as it does in Victory Lane. And I'll, I'm going to gnaw this thing all the way down. Yeah, that's right. It's a great koozie. <laughs> Go over here. Uh, Ross, Trey Matthews, uh, Cronkite News, uh, PBS. Um, you described uh, a little while ago how you were personally racing Blaney, how you were going for the win, and you didn't care uh, that he was uh, racing for a championship. But I want to ask you, like, uh, how would you describe uh, Blaney's race style, whether it was this race or previous uh, competitions that you may have had now that he is the, the champion? Why well, do you want to uh, – maybe I said it wrong earlier, but I, I do care. I, I care – arguably out there more than more than anybody because I was not going to put him in a position to to damage his car in any way or put his car in a bad spot other than keep him behind me and as long as he's behind me it's all I cared about um you know he, we're all we're all different he he reacts physically in the car he might I mean he says stuff on the radio for sure but he I just have known him that he he you can see him. You can. They wear bright neon yellow, so you can see it easily. Um, you know, I. Uh, I just. Yeah, I think that I. I believe that I cared, arguably more than him. He didn't have to pass me to win the championship. He could stay right there. There was no other competitor for points within any sight of me. It was the nineteen, the twelve, and the one, third, second, first. So, um, yeah, I, I. I'd say I. I cared more than anybody. Um, as long as he was running second, he didn't need to run first. He didn't run first last year, and he, you know, um, his teammate won, and and now um, he need, he could run second again and win championship. Uh, Cooper and Blaze Radio Online dot com over here, Ross. Uh, how difficult was it to just run pretty much from yellow line to the wall today? You know, it seemed like everywhere was working. You were on the bottom. You were on the top. How difficult was that? And also, just you know, not only racing but fending off all those guys in all those different lanes. Yeah, the track changed a lot um and we had speed all weekend we knew that and uh and as we moved around in the race i was when i started the, the first run i could see the people in front of me moving up so i moved up with harvick and with a few of the guys by the way that was incredible to race with him like that like restart side by side with him um in his last race was just i was i actually got a little emotional in the car i was like looking over and then and then we were coming to the restart and i'm warming my tires and i'm like don't feel sorry for him. Go pass him. Like <laughs> it's a race and drove off into turn one and was able to get the lead. But, um, yeah, we would start on the bottom. And then I was, I asked once I had the lead and had the front couple spots when they were moving up, um, uh, when guys were moving up off the bottom, um, and Brandon and Phil were giving me updates of when it was a little early, when it was, they were already half the field was up there. So, um, yeah, it was. It was uh, our car was versatile. I could go places. I could place it. A uh, little half turn of brake bias to tighten me up as I went uh, throughout the run. And um, yeah, it was. Um, I could place it and still make speed. Um, there's been times here at Phoenix with this group. The, our first race here in the 42 car in 2021 was my first race with Phil Surgeon and my engineers, and um, we were the slowest car into turn one by far. Like I couldn't get in the corner. I had to slow down and. I, I'd argue that there weren't many people faster than us today, and I could place it where I wanted to. Good to uh, Jonathan over here on the left. Jonathan Field, the racing experts. Uh, I, what a season, first of all. I, I know you've faced some challenges. Uh, what is it like to just put a, I guess, an exclamation on the se uh, exclamation point on the season with what you did today? Indescribable. It's it's honestly hard to put into words what this means what winning in cup feels like i cannot describe it i cannot describe the the ripple effects this will have going into the off season preparing for next year 
you know, I, Justin Marks hired me, Trackhouse hired me, and Justin knew who I was. I've wrecked Justin Marks in the Xfinity races before. Daniel Suarez has wrecked Justin Marks in Xfinity races before. He knew who he was hiring when he put us two behind the wheel of his two cars. And, you know, through all the stuff, he stayed with us. There was definitely public stuff that I wouldn't have said. But he's my boss, and he gets to say it. He owns the team. And I got to be the employee at that point. As an independent contractor, I have to listen to what he says if I want to drive the car. And so y'all got to watch that. You got to watch me learn through that process. Our sport is incredibly invasive for professional and personal things that people say if they say them publicly, which y'all will put a microphone in front of us 24 hours a day, seven days a week if we'll allow it. So um, it is it is so, so good to end this season with all the stuff, right? And I, the best way I can describe it, just a lot of stuff, and that's cup racing. I'm going to make mistakes, and they knew that hiring me and through the good days of winning and the bad days of crashing out, going for wins or spinning people out. Um, ultimately they're there for me. And, um, this is a great way to, uh, to go enjoy the off season. Okay. We'll take one more. We'll go to John. John Newby, NBC sports. So I asked Christopher, asked William Byron and Kyle Larson earlier, you know, just about, the future of the sport, you know, the, the guys that will keep contending for championships year after year after year. Is it exciting for you knowing that you, you know, will potentially be in this group and that you've won it, you know, some of the most important tracks you need to? Yes. To say my name next to guys like Kyle Larson, it's hard for me to believe it. It's hard for me to understand it, comprehend it. Early last year when we won at Coda, we walked back in the shop, the shop that was CGR, the shop that I had been at for so many good things of getting the jobs, winning the Xfinity race, then it's all gone. Now I'm the third cup driver in the 77 with Spire. Now we're coming in as a 42 driver. Like for those win win parties, I was I had a bit of like imposter syndrome or something. I didn't really believe it. And I'm having a bit of it now whenever you like look long term and you're like you're saying like maybe I'm gonna be competing. Uh, that's pretty wild, but I feel like, yes, we're going to celebrate this, and obviously we have no racing. I think my next race now is maybe Speed Fest at, at Watermelon Capital Speedway in January. I got some time to celebrate, but a lot of work to do. I mean, there was a lot of tracks this year. I did not show up, me personally, giving my best effort um, just from a, a gas and brake and steering perspective of things. Worked a lot on Phoenix over the last – few months and I put that into action today and then together with the car being incredibly good you saw that um so yeah I don't really know how to comprehend that maybe in in a couple years we're still doing this um I I'm human I go back to my past and I've had things taken away that were a sure bet um I thought it was you know a one direction all the way up the mountain and um had to go find another mountain to climb, and, and we found it, and we're climbing it. So I feel like um, as long as I get up and I do my best, I put my work in, I go to work, and I surround myself with good people. I trust our processes that, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. 